Steve Barkowski, who's a former number one pick, played for the Atlanta Falcons, played at Cal. He was also Lee Steinberg, the super agent's first client ever. Um, he told Joe Burrow on Sunday night, pull an Eli Manning, man. Steve Barkowski told Burrow that uh, at a Davey O'Brien function Sunday night. And now Barkowski's here with us on OTB. Steve, good morning. Thank you for the time. Hey, Jordy T. Bob, good to be with you guys. Absolutely. Thank you for joining, Miss. Uh, thank you for joining us. So tell us about uh, the, I guess, just the impetus of giving giving Joe that information. <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, it's not like I, you know, rediscovered a, uh, yeah. a cure for cancer. You know, I mean, this is <laughs> it's happened before. Uh, all you have to do is go back to the Elway uh, situation when Baltimore he wasn't going to play there, and they made uh, arrangements for him to end up in Denver and. You know, certainly everybody remembers the, especially down in your deck of the woods, they remember the Eli Manning deal yep. uh, where he said, I don't want to play in San Diego. And, you know, the best I can tell, that worked out pretty good for both those guys. They both got a couple of Super Bowl championships out of it. So, uh, you know, I mean, it was not, um, you know, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't, I wasn't mining for gold. Uh, I yeah. just told Joe what I thought and told his mom and dad what I thought. And, you know, I, I, I Listen, the CAA people would have brought it up if I didn't. Uh, you know, it's just uh, you know everybody knows that Cincinnati struggled the last few years, and I, I just didn't want to see him, have, you know, have to go to a team where all of a sudden, you know, uh, he's thrown into the fire, and you know he doesn't have anybody around him that can support him. I mean, you know, in football, you're only as good as the people around you, and uh, you know, Cincinnati is in a, a building or rebuilding or whatever you want to call it phase, and. So, I, you know, I just pitched that out there to him. Well, and, and, and Steve, I mean, it, why it's so interesting is because you've gone through that. Like, like your perspective, you can speak to it from actual experience. So what was it like being a number one overall pick and going to a franchise that, as, as you said, I mean, until Arthur Blank bought the team, it just wasn't run well. Like, what, what was your personal experience like? Well, I didn't know what run well meant when I started in the game as a rookie. Uh, I, you know, I, I uh, went to a college that, you know, didn't their football program wasn't exactly run well either. You know, uh, and and I did okay there, and and uh, thought maybe, uh, you know, the Falcons obviously were a team that were struggling, um, and I I didn't know the ins and outs of you know what it took to to manage a, an operation like that, you know, a national football league franchise. But, uh, you know, I knew that they weren't very good and, uh, that's how they ended up with first pick. So, um, you know, I, I understand a lot more about it now, you know, I've been in business myself and, and, and it's just hard to overcome, um, uh, poor management in any walk of life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when an organization doesn't seem to have their act together, um, you know, that kind of filters down through it. And, uh, you know, don't think that it doesn't affect the players. Um, most of the players don't know it, but, you know, that's kind of the way, that's what I found here in Atlanta. They just found kind of a floundering organization that just didn't, you know, really put an emphasis on winning. Um, you know, and I'm not the first one who's, who's uh, been through something like that. It's just uh, that was my own personal experience. And, and, and so, do you, do you have any insight to if you are going to say, "Hey, I'm I'm not coming out," uh, or, or "I'm not I'm not going to play for y'all"? Like, what does that what does that process actually look like? Is that just your agent straight up telling the team, "Look, if you take this guy, he's going to refuse to play for you"? Well, you know, I and listen. I Joe's a football player. He's going to go and play wherever he's selected. Um, you know, I, he does have leverage, and and you know, I mean, I. Again, you know, I, I think how they utilize that and how that really, you know, comes to the fore, if that's something that he wants to do, is, you know, up to his agents and, and how they negotiate, uh, you know, the situation with uh, the would-be teams that he'd be playing for. So, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a different uh, song and dance, really, than, you know, just somebody saying, hey, you know, why don't you utilize that leverage? There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, I'm sure, making, you know, a situation like that happen. Um, yeah, Eli could probably speak to it better than I, but <laughs> yeah. so he he's been through it, uh, and uh, I don't know what it took to get that deal done, but you know I know it got done, and and it sure worked out uh, to his favor. And, and am I crazy, or was Steinberg also John Elway's agent? No, he was not. Okay, I'm crazy did. then. All right, continue. But Tom Condon at CAA was was Eli's man. It was Eli's yeah. agent 
and Joe has the same agent there with uh, with CAA. We're talking to Steve Barkowski, former number one pick of the Atlanta Falcons back in 1975. He came out of uh, Cal. He was at a Davy O'Brien function with Joe on Sunday night. Steve, I wonder, from quarterback to quarterback, uh, a guy who went number one and had a, a stellar college career, um, what do you think is Joe Burrow, the quarterback? Well, I, I was, you know, incredibly impressed, uh, you know, by his performance on the field uh, throughout the, you know, the, the 15 game schedule that, uh, that LSU played. It seemed, he seemed to get better every week and more comfortable every week. Um, and, uh, you know, I was probably, I'm even more impressed with uh, him in person. You know, I, he just, uh, you know, he, he seems very dialed in. And uh, talking uh, briefly with his offensive coordinator uh, down there in Dallas uh, a couple of days ago, he told me that he's the most dialed in guy he's ever been around. And, uh, you know, when it comes from a guy like Steve who's been around the game for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, that says a lot. Um, so like I said, Joe's a football player. He wants to play and, 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 uh, whoever gets, uh, the, the rights to him, they're going to have a franchise quarterback for a long, long time. So we, we've been mining your perspective a lot today, Steve, and, and thank you so much. For those that don't know Steve Barkowski, number one overall pick, uh, NFL passing touchdowns, leader in 80 rating leader in 83 is in the Falcons ring of honor, Georgia hall of fame. So you're someone who, even though you got drafted into a situation, maybe wasn't the best, you still found that professional success. What was in, in, in your experience, the biggest challenge to making that jump from college to the league? Well, I, I mean, the biggest challenge was finding enough really good players around me. Uh, <laughs> you know, and that's why Joe should pull an Eli. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's you know, football is like a big chemistry experiment. You know, I mean, you got to have the right, all the right elements in it uh, to really make it work. And uh, you know, it took a while, but uh, we built a pretty, pretty strong presence. You know, in the league, uh, we went from irrelevant to relevant. Um, and you know, I, I watched that transition, and and it happened because. All of a sudden, you know, we had had a good group of guys. You know, we had uh, a good group of guys on the field and off the field, and guys cared cared about one another and and that sort of thing. But you know, it, it, it still comes back to management. Um, you know, when when Arthur Blank bought the bought the franchise here, um, I was able to get up close and personal with how uh, Arthur operates, and and I just saw just such a distinct difference between uh, his leadership style and the former um, owner of the team who I played for, um, you know, it's just, uh, that was the, the distinction that, that made me understand that there is a difference in the league um, from franchise to franchise among these 32 owners. Um, yeah, it probably, there's fewer uh, of guys that um, don't care about winning now than there were before because uh you know, it's a revenue sharing uh, industry and, and, and these donors are, you know, some of the most successful businessmen um, that you could ever find. So um, that the, you know, Jerry Jones, the, his type and Arthur Blank and, you know, it, it's, it's made everybody else uh, up their game uh, from a management perspective. So I think winning is, is, is paramount and, and uh, everybody knows that um, now, but uh it wasn't like that. It hadn't always been like that. So, and I'm not saying that the Cincinnati Bengals don't have it. I just don't, you know, I see what's, uh, what the uh, product is on the field and, and they just can't seem to get their act together. So uh, not to be disparaging. And, and I'm, you know, that's the last thing I wanted to do is cause controversy, yeah. but I, I I've seen both sides of it. I, I know the difference between uh, great management and, and uh, sort of the middle of the road management and, the, the great management teams win, seem to win more consistently than others. Yeah, Steve, I don't think it's controversial. I think it's a great point of view, somebody who's lived it and has good oh, yeah. access to the league and has been around it. I, I appreciate it this morning. Thank you for sharing some time with us. Hopefully we can do it again. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Take care. Say, say hello to all my Saints fans down there. <laughs> Got it. Who that, Steve? <laughs> Thank you so much, yeah. Steve. Uh, all right, Steve Barkowski yeah. checking in from Atlanta. We'll close it out next.